Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise, yeah, praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. I want to use this opportunity to welcome everybody in today's service. I want to say uh, the Lord is good, the Lord is faithful, and the Lord is kind for making us to be in today's service. May the name of the Lord be praised and be blessed forever in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for your goodness and mercies upon us. We thank you for making us to come together to worship you this hour. We thank you for your children that want to hear from your word. We thank you for the followers of this program. Anyway, you are following our ministration. We thank you, Lord, for the grace given to us to share in your word. Be thou exalted in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we cannot do anything without you. We depend on the power of the Holy Spirit. It's not by our power, neither is it by our mind, but it's by the Spirit of the living God. Father, may you touch our lives this hour, as many that are following our ministration today, as many that are part of this ministration, may you touch their lives, change their lives, and give them eternal life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Beloved people of God, I welcome you this hour. It shall be well with you. May God bless you for being part of this ministration in the name of Jesus. Um, I want to welcome everybody. Once again, I welcome you that are joining us in our service today, uh, your family and every one of you that are seated together for this ministration. May God bless you abundantly in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Amen. topic today says, Anointing to do exploit. The anointing to do exploit. Let us take our Bible reading from the book of 1 Samuel chapter 17. From where we took our reading, we will take a few verses from it and then we we'll look at Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6. 1 Samuel chapter 17 from verse 32. We we'll just take a few verses from it and now look at the book of Zechariah. 1 Samuel chapter 17 from verse 32. Then David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, You are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came, and took a lamb out of the flock. I went out after it and struck it, and delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it by its bed, and struck and killed it. Your servant has killed both lion and bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them. See, he has defied the armies of the living God. Moreover, David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul so said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. Let's look at verse 41. So the Philistine came and began drawing near to David, and the man who bought the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was only a youth, ruddy and good-looking. So the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the beasts of the air and the beasts of the field. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword with a spear and with a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you 
and take your, your head from you. And this day I will give the carcass of the camp of the Philistines to the best of the air and the white beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Anointing to do exploit. In the book of 1 Samuel chapter 16, David was anointed. He was anointed by Samuel. I want to tell you that what makes a man different from another is anointing. When the anointing of God is upon your life, you are no longer an ordinary person. You are now someone with extraordinary and supernatural ability. When we are without anointing, we are ordinary. But once the anointing of God is upon us, we become extraordinary. Once we are empty without anointing, we are natural. But once the anointing of God is upon us, we become supernatural. Once we are, we are without anointing, we perform ordinary things. But once the anointing of God is upon our lives, we begin to act in a supernatural way. We begin to manifest extraordinary feats. And we begin to do exploits. Not because of our ability, but because of supernatural ability. When we talk about anointing, we talk about the breath of God upon a man that causes him to perform supernatural feats. The presence of God in the life of a man that makes him to see God. The presence of God in the life of a man that makes him to behave like God. The presence of God in the life of a man that makes him to do what other men could not do. The hand of God, the presence of God upon a man that makes him to perform and to do what thousands of men cannot do. From where we took our reading, the king of Israel, Saul, went to the battle against the Philistines. He took the armies of Israel, all the Israeli soldiers, they went to fight the Philistines. When they, went, when they entered into the battle, they saw a Philistine champion, a man called Goliath. This man, according to how he was described, there are many things that made this man to be extraordinary. There are many things that this man possessed that made the people of Israel to be afraid of him. Number one is that that man was a giant, a man of extraordinary stature, a man of a great stature, a man of a, an imposing stature, a great man with a great stature. He's so great and huge and tall, that no man in Israel could be used to compare his height. Coming to physical ability, Goliath is a man that has great strength and power. Coming to being able to know how to fight, experience of warfare, Bible said that he has been a warrior from his youth. He has conquered many nations from his youth. He has killed many people from his youth. Goliath is not an ordinary man. Once there is, Goliath is a man of war that the Philistines are using to fight against their enemies. Any enemy or any country that want to fight against Philistines, that the Philistines perceive to be powerful, they will present Goliath. Goliath don't attend to ordinary battles. Goliath don't go to ordinary battles. He goes to battles that involves powers. Battles that involves powerful soldiers. Now, when we talk about Goliath, we are not just talking about a man. We are also talking about a man and also someone with spiritual powers. 
Goliath is also a man that has his own powers. He is a worshipper of idols, the Philistine idols, the God of Philistines. He is a worshipper of idols, a great champion, yet a worshipper of idols. Now, Bible said, when he came out to fight against the people of Israel, because of the physical stature of Goliath, because of the weapons of Goliath, Goliath is not a man of ordinary weapon. He, possess, he possesses a powerful weapon, sophisticated weapons, and expensive weapons that the children of Israel could not fight him. We want to talk about the anointing that makes us to do extraordinary things. Anointing to do exploits. Bible said, when the children of Israel saw the presence of Goliath, they all went away. They ran away. They became afraid. And they were in hiding for many days. And Goliath will come to insult the God of Israel. If you say that you have a God, let that God come and fight me. If you know that God of heaven is your God, come and challenge me. If you know that your God goes with you in a battle, come and challenge me. If you know that you are a servant of the Most High God, come and challenge me. I am more powerful than your king. I am more powerful than your God. He continued to insult the God of Israel. He continued to rebuke and to speak against the God of Israel. And Bible said, when it is time for God to arise, he chose a young man called David, a man that has been anointed. You cannot insult God. You cannot speak against God while there is a man of anointing. Saul, as the king of Israel, has been rejected by God. So, God cannot do something meaningful with a rejected man. God cannot do something meaningful with the king of Israel because heaven have rejected him. So, Bible says that immediately God started looking for a man with anointing. There are many soldiers, but no one was anointed. There are many warriors, but yet none of them were anointed. Once Goliath started uh, speaking against the God of Israel, the God of Israel made David to appear. He caused David to, to, to stand and to counter the threat and the insult of Goliath. Bible said when David heard about the, 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 the insult, when David heard about the, the, the fears that were upon the children of Israel, when David discovered what was happening, he asked them, why would you allow this uncircumcised Philistine to insult our call? Imagine this uncircumcised Philistine speaking against the God of Israel. And Bible said, Go, uh, David went to the king and said, I can fight this Goliath. The anointing of God is upon my life. And Bible said, David, uh, Saul said to him, My son, you cannot fight Goliath. He has been a man of war since the days of his youth. You are still a young boy. The king of Israel was seen an ordinary David, but the God of heaven was seen a great David because God has anointed David. The anointing of God is upon the life of David. When the anointing of God is upon your life, you are no longer a boy. When the anointing of God is upon your life, you are no longer an ordinary person. When the anointing of God is upon your life, you are no longer a, 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 a strange person. When the anointing of God is upon your life, you are an extraordinary person. The king of Israel was looking at David as a small boy. He said, you cannot fight him. You are still a small boy. You cannot fight him. You are not strong enough. He is a man of war. He has been in this war. Allow us. Do not go so that he will kill you. Don't go and risk your life. He is a man of war. And David 
how to remind the king the exploit, those things that the Lord has done for him. And Bible said, David said to the king, there are some occasions that God Almighty have delivered me. Many occasions, lions have come to take away my sheep. Many a times, bears have come to take away my sheep. And I, David, I have been able to kill them and rescue my sheep. I killed lions with my bare hands. I killed bears. That God that delivered me from the hands of lion. That God that delivered me from the hands of bear. That God that delivered me from the hands of dangerous animals. He is able to deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Bible said immediately, David declared, that God that created the and earth, that God that is able to do all things, he is able to deliver me from him. So that the whole world will know that there is God in Israel. And Bible said, King Saul gave him armors, gave him some weapons, gave him some clothes, gave him some things to put on so that he can be able to fight Goliath. David said to him, no, I cannot fight him with this. I cannot fight him with all these weapons. I want to go in the name of the Lord. I have not been conversant with this. I have not been using this type of weapon. I want to go with the highest weapon. I want to go with the name of the God of Israel. I want the God of Israel to deliver me and not my weapon. I'm not trusting based on what I can do. I'm not trusting on my weapons and the, 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 the garment I am putting on. I am trusting in what God can do. I am serving a living God. God that created heaven and earth. God that can do all things. God that can heal all sickness. God that can deliver me from the powers of darkness. I am not serving a man. I am serving a living God. The people of God, we are not serving a man. We are, I'm not afraid of what devil can do. We are serving a living God. The creator of heaven and earth, the maker of man, the mighty man in battle, the great God of Israel. We are serving a living God. And Bible said, Goliath, the enemy of the people of Israel, Goliath, the accuser of brethren, Goliath, the enemy that has come to kill and destroy, has to face David face to face. And Bible said, when Goliath was coming to meet David, he saw a young man like David, and he, cast, he neglected David, he belittled David. Who are you coming to fight with this little catapult? Do you think that I'm a bird? I curse you in the name of my gods. Can you see? Goliath is not just a warrior. He's also a worshiper of idols. Not only that he's a man of war, he's also a worshiper of an idol. And Bible said he cursed David with the name of his gods. He cursed David. He did a contention against David. He put curse on David in the name of his gods. He wanted to destroy David with the name of his gods. Before Goliath will kill you, he will first of all curse you. He will place a curse on you. Goliath cannot kill you without cursing you. Goliath does not even believe in his ability to fight. Goliath does not believe in his weapon. He believes in the power of his idol. He calls David in the name of his idol. But thank God, David did not appear by his own power. He also came in the name of the Most High God. And Bible said, he cursed David, I curse you with the name of my idol, with the name of my curse, I curse you, I will kill you, and I will give the best of the air so that they will take your flesh. Can you see how this Goliath can use his curse to fight? The enemies of the people of Israel can worship idols. He's a magician. He's an idol worshiper. He's a, 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 he's a witch, uh, he's a, a, a wizard. He's a witch also. He can manipulate, 
He can do a cantation. He can use the name of his gods to attack you. He can inflict you with sickness. He can inflict you with dangerous attacks. He can fight you with the name of his gods. So David said to him, I'm not afraid of your gods. I'm not afraid of you. You are coming against me in the name of your God. You are coming against me with your instrument of warfare. You are coming against me with your spear. You are coming against me with your weapons. But I come against you in the name of God of Israel. The God that you created heaven and earth. I am coming against you in the name of God of the host. The maker of man. The mighty man in battle. In his name I am coming against you. I will kill you, and today the whole world will know that there is God in Israel. I want to tell you sometimes in our life, the devil will try to rise, will try to intimidate us. The devil will rise and to tell us that we are not safe again. The devil will rise to speak against our God. Sometimes the devil will try to ask you, where is your God? Who can deliver you? We can remember what, uh, what, what, what Nebuchadnezzar said to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said that they will never bow down to Egyptian God. And what happened? Bible said, Nebuchadnezzar said, if you don't bow down to this idol, I will cast you into fire. And you will now show me, you will show me that God that can be able to deliver you from my hands. Can you see, there are some powers, sometimes the devil will challenge you that you don't have a God, that you, your God cannot deliver you. And we can remember what Pharaoh said to Moses and Aaron. He said to them, I will, I will punish you, I will not allow you to go, I will not allow you to depart from Egypt. You will now show me that God that can deliver you from my hands. So many a times, the devil will try to challenge our God. From time immemorial, the devil has been questioning the authority of our God. But thank God we have a living God who can deliver us. We have a living God who can defeat the powers of darkness. Sometimes there will be some situations. People will be asking you, where is your God? If you're a child of God, why would you allow this to happen? Why would God allow this to happen? Sometimes the world will fight against us. Sometimes the world will attack us, saying that our God cannot deliver us. And this Goliath was there castigating and speaking against the God of Israel. But thank God, David said to him, you came to me, with your weapons and instrument of war, but I came against you with the name of the God Almighty. The Almighty God, the God of hosts, the creator of heaven and earth, have come against you with his name. I will kill you today and cut off your neck. Remember, when David was saying this, he was not having any sword with him. David was declaring this by faith. Bible said that the just shall live by faith. Beloved people of God, we are to live by faith. Don't live by your ability. Don't live by what you see. Believe and walk by faith. Believe in what God can do. We live by faith. Exercise your faith. If a child of God, walk by faith, not by sight. By faith we believe that God created heaven and earth. David was not having any sword, but David said to him, I come against you. With the name of the God of Israel, I will kill you and cut off your neck. And I will, I will, I will, I will give the carcass of the armies of Philistines to the best of the air. That is the word of faith. Though David was not having any sword, but he prophesied that by the power of the God of, um, by the God of Israel, I will kill you, not by my own power, by the name of God of Israel. My dear people of God, it's time for us to call upon our God. Anointing of God is upon our lives. 
When the anointing of God is upon you, when the anointing of God is upon your life, you are no longer an ordinary man. You are a supernatural being. The Spirit of God is upon you. You are no longer to be afraid. You are no longer to be intimidated. When the Spirit of God is upon your life, you are carrying an extraordinary personality. And Bible said, David declared, I have a God. He delivered me years ago. He can deliver me today. God has done many things for you. God has answered your prayers. Many years ago, God answered your prayers. God healed your sicknesses. God delivered you. God did mighty things in your life. Many years ago, do you know that God can still deliver you today? He can deliver you today. I don't know what is your situation, but I want to tell you, God can deliver you today. He did it yesterday. He did it many years ago. He can do it again. God can do it again. And again and again. He's the same yesterday and today forever. Yesterday he's the same and forever he reign. There is no reason to doubt. God can do it again. Unchangeable, unchangeable God. Unchangeable God. Unchangeable, unchangeable God. Jehovah, unchangeable God. Unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable, unchangeable God, Jehovah, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, Jehovah, unchangeable God. Unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God. And Bible said, immediately, David killed Goliath. We are all aware of how it happened. By faith, David killed Goliath. Number one is for you to have faith. Number two is for you to exercise your faith. From today, exercise your faith. God is with you. If you're a child of God, if you have given your life to Christ, if the anointing of God is upon your life, exercise your faith. In the face of difficulties, in the face of challenges, in the face of whatever challenges you are facing in life, exercise your faith. Do not allow your situation, do not allow the devil to have victory over you. Exercise your faith. No matter what is happening in your life, exercise your faith. Talk, not because you are powerful as a human being, but talk because you have a powerful God. You have God that can do all things. Our God is able to do all things. You are having, you are serving a living God. You are not serving idol. You are not serving human being. You are serving a God that created heaven and earth. He created the universe. He created the ocean. He created the high seas. He created the trees. He created the stars. He created the moon. He created the whole universe. He created the animals. He created the whole human beings. He created all the powers. He created the water. He created the air we breathe. It is time for you to exercise your faith. God can do all things. He can do all things. Exercise your faith. David exercised his faith and was able to kill Goliath. What about you? You have a living God. Exercise your faith. Are you sick? Exercise your faith. Are you afraid? Exercise your faith. Are you in a missionary field? Exercise your faith. He can make something out of nothing. He can do a new thing. He is the God of all flesh. There is nothing he cannot do. He can destroy any power. He can destroy any kingdom. No power can challenge him. His power is, is total. No power can challenge him. He is almighty God. No power can challenge his powers. From the beginning to the end, he has been our God. He has been even before the beginning began. 
So my dear people of God, you have no reason to be afraid. You are serving a God that created heaven and earth. Wherever you are, believe in the God of Israel. Our God is the God that answers prayer. He can do all things right there where you are. He can do it in your life. He can change every situation. He can transform your life. He can do what no man can do. At the end of this episode, Bible said, David by faith killed Goliath. What did he use to kill Goliath? Just another catapult. He took stone. In the catapult, he stoned Goliath. Just, a, just one chance, one hit, he killed Goliath. I want to tell you that with God, all things are possible. When you join your faith with God, with the anointing of God, when you believe in what God can do, you will defeat your Goliath. Let's look at the book of Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6. Zechariah, can somebody read it in Bahasan, in Malaysian language? Zechariah chapter 4 from verse 6. Zechariah, are you there? Somebody should read it. Zechariah chapter 4 from verse 6 to 7. Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 4. Zechariah chapter 4 from verse 6 to 7. Yeah. Yeah, read. Read in Bahasa. Say 7. Ampat. Ayat, pasal 4 ayat 6 dan 7. Oke, okay, oke. Okay. Cakaria pasal 4 ayat ke-6 dan hingga ayat 7. Ayat ke-6, maka berbicaralah ia katanya Maka berbicaralah ia katanya, inilah firman Tuhan kepada Jerobabel bunyinya. Bukan dengan kepaksaan dan bukan dengan kekuatan, melainkan dengan rohku firman Tuhan semesta alam. Ayat ketujuh, siapakah engkau gunung yang besar di depan Jarubabel, engkau menjadi tanah rata. Ia akan mengangkat batu utama, sedang orang bersorak. Bagus, bagus sekali batu itu. Demikianlah firman Tuhan. Praise the Lord. Okay, let me read Amen. in English. So he answered and said to me, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become play a plain, and he shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace, grace to it. This is word of God. I want to tell you that there is one thing that is very, very clear. Who are you? You mountain before Zerubbabel. That is a question. Not by power nor by might, but by the Spirit, says the Lord. Not by might, not by your strength, not by your intelligence, not by your riches, not by the color of your skin, not by your country, not by the level of your civilization, not by power nor by might, but by the Spirit, says the Lord. Who are, who are you, this mountain before Zerubbabel? The Lord shall make you to become a plain. You shall become a plain. Once we call the name of the Lord, mountains before Zerubbabel will become a plain. Who are you, this mountain before Zerubbabel? You cannot pull down this mountain by your own power. It is by the power and the Spirit of God. Not by power, that place where you are, not by your power, not by your strength, not by your muscle, not by who you are. It is by the spirit of the living God. Anointing to do exploit. Who are you this mountain before Zerubbabel? There are many mountains that are standing before the children of God. We are facing serious challenges today in the world. Children of God are facing serious challenges. The mountain of persecution, persecution of Christians, persecution of Christian missionaries, preachers of the word of God, 
persecutions from one country to the other that are persecuting Christians, trying to Islamize the world, trying to uh, make the world to be a secular place, giving no room for spirituality, fighting against the church. Bible said that the church of Christ shall march forward, that the gate of hell shall not prevail. Who are you mounting before Zerubbabel? There are many mountains that are standing against us from preaching the word of God. There are many agents of Satan that the devil have empowered to stop us from preaching the gospel. Who are you dismounting before Zerubbabel? The Lord will make you to become a plane. Become a plane because the mouth of God Almighty has said, not by power nor by might. My temple of God, it is time for us to call our God. Don't depend on your own ability. Don't depend on what you can do. Do not be afraid, O oh, you Zerubbabel. Do not be afraid of what you are passing through. I don't know what is your situation. Do not be afraid, not by your power. You are seeing yourself alone. The book of Matthew chapter 18 from verse 20. Bible said, I will be with you till the end of the age. You are not alone. The Spirit of God is with you. That is the Spirit to do exploit. The book of Acts and Apostles chapter 1 from verse 8. You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. And you become my witness in Jerusalem, Samaria, Judea, Samaria, and the other parts of the world. You will become my witness. You will conquer the world. Because the Spirit of God is upon you. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. That is the book of Luke chapter 4 from verse 16. I want to tell you that God wants to do something. God wants to change your life. God wants to show you it's not by your power. We are weak as humans. We are ordinary sand. We are ordinary humans. Small time we will live and we will die. But the Spirit of God endure it forever. Not by your power. Not by your might. It's by the Spirit of the living God. I want you to believe in the Spirit of God. Accept the Spirit of God in your life. Allow God to direct your life. Let God be your God. Worship God. Read the Word of God. Come to God. Fear the Lord. He can do all things. There is nothing He cannot do. It's not by your power. Neither is it by your might. When David came to Goliath, not by his power nor by his might, but by the Spirit of God, and David said, I come against you in the name of the Lord, in the Spirit of the Lord, by the power of the Lord, by the finger of the Lord, by the strength of the Lord, for by flesh shall no man prevail. We can only make it by the finger of the Lord. My devil of God, don't depend on what you can do. Depend on what God can do. Don't depend on your strength. Depend on the Spirit of God. We need the Spirit of God upon our lives. We need God to enter. We need to Jesus to enter our life as our Lord and personal Savior. We need Jesus to lead us in everything we do. We need Jesus Christ in our lives. He died for us. He shed his blood on the cross of Calvary. That whoso that believes in him shall not die, but have everlasting life. Not by power, nor by might, but by the Spirit of the living God. We want to pray. If you want to give your life to Christ, if you want to accept Jesus as a Lord and personal Savior, I want you to accept him with all your heart. We want to allow you to accept Jesus. But we give our sister, sister, pastor, Shilda, we give her the opportunity to translate the word of God in Malaysian language before we pray. So let our sister, sister Shilda, pastor Shilda, translate this message in Malaysian language. Thank you. Oke, okay, thank you, Reverend. Oke, okay, apa yang kita dengar khotbah sebentar tadi itu adalah berkhotbah uh, khotbah tentang sesuatu yang biasa kita dengar sebuah cerita, tapi apa yang kita lihat daripada ayat yang ke-32 sehingga ayat yang ke-52 ini adalah bercakap tentang kisah iman. Kita belajar tentang kisah iman Daud. Kita melihat di sini, kalau kita lihat dari ayat yang ke-32 ini, Daud berkata kepada Saul, Jangan tawar arti, dia kata. Ini adalah kata-kata Daud. Dia memberitahu kepada Saul bahwa dia, dia memberitahu bahwa mereka tidak perlu rasa tawar hati bila mereka berhadapan dengan orang Palestine. Nah, 
ini adalah kisah yang dilihat di situ. Pada waktu ini adalah kisah sambungan cerita yang minggu lalu di mana Daud itu diurapi. Dia diurapi oleh Tuhan dan dia daripada abang-abangnya yang lain tidak terpilih tetapi Tuhan berkenaan kepada Daud. Nah, kenapa dia berkenan kepada Daud? Sebab Tuhan sudah melihat hati dan hati dan keper, uh, apa? itu pikiran si Raja Saul itu ada yang tidak berkenaan kepada Tuhan. Jadi Tuhan itu mau mencari seorang yang diurapi. Perhatikan baik-baik. Kita melayani Tuhan kalau kita sudah rasa bahwa kita melakukan sesuatu yang tidak berkenaan kepada Tuhan, 